So this is the uh, parking area at the corner of Deer Rapids Road and Milner Road. And you can see that we're a lot closer to Massanutten Mountain here. So we've moved up in the stratigraphic section from stop three, the lower Martinsburg Formation. We're now going to go around the corner here and we're going to check out the upper Martinsburg Formation. So this is stop four, and this outcrop is really fundamentally different from what we saw back at Tumbling Run and in the lower Martinsburg formation over on Route 11. For one thing, there is no more calcite in this rock. So if I take my acid bottle and I put a few drops on here, there's no reaction at all, all right? So this is now 100% siliciclastic material, sand and mud. And yes, there's sand in this as well. It's a particular kind of sandstone that's dirty sandstone. It's got a lot of clay in it. We call it gray wacky. So here you can see basically gray wacky here and here. And then there's some intervening shaley material. And the shaley material here has a pretty strong cleavage to it. That's a tectonic cleavage that was imparted to these rocks much later, uh, way after their original deposition when they got tilted and folded into the giant Massanutten synclinorium, um, which was during the Allegheny and Orogeny. So that's late Paleozoic. But here in the Martinsburg Formation as sedimentary layers, that's late Ordovician in age, um, and they represent deep water turbidite deposits. So turbidity currents going down into this deepened basin. And as for why the basin got deeper, if you think about loading the Taconian volcanic island arc onto the edge of the North American continent, it weighs a lot. And so that extra new mountain range that's sticking onto the edge of the continent pushes down on the continent and causes it to flex downward. And that creates a deeper basin. As the Taconian mountains are being weathered and eroded, sediments go avalanching down into that basin, and they settle out as graded beds of gray wacky. So each of these graded beds is coarse grained at the bottom, and it gets finer towards the top. So we've got a few beds here that are worth paying attention to. Over here on the left, you can see an older mud deposit. You can see the strong cleavage that runs through it. The muddier layers are more susceptible to developing cleavage as compared to the sandier layers. Don't get thrown by this green color. That's just lichens growing on the surface of the outcrop. But right here, you can see a sudden crisp transition into relatively coarse sand. And that gets finer as you go over this way. It gets uh, basically into fine sand and silt. And then you've got uh, another little clay rich layer here, another base of a graded bed here with coarse grain sand. And then it gets finer going over in this direction. So these are successive turbidity current deposits. Some of these turbidity currents must have been huge because the resulting turbidites, the graded beds of sand and mud that were deposited are extraordinarily thick. So I've got an example here where I've got a layer that's probably uh, a foot to maybe 14 inches thick, and that's all sand. It goes up and it goes down. It must have been a tremendous amount of sand covering an enormous area. This implies a tremendously huge turbidity current to transport all this sand and mud. All right, so a big, powerful underwater avalanche rolling down into the depths, and as it slows down, it settles out with coarse sand being deposited first, medium, fine sand into silt and clay up towards the top of the deposit. And then that happens again and again and again and again as the Taconian orogeny sheds enormous quantities of sediment into the adjacent sedimentary basins. It's worth realizing that even though today we recognize mountain belts by their metamorphic signature or the intrusion of igneous rocks or their deformational signature, the folding and faulting associated with them, the way they were originally recognized was through their sedimentary signature. The fact that all this sediment had to come from somewhere. And the source for all this sand is the weathering of some rocks that were poking up above sea level. Those were the Taconian Mountains. The Martinsburg Formation is basically a signal of Taconian mountain building, all right? This is flish in the alpine sense of the word, deep water, 
plastic sediment that's been shed off of the mountain belt. 